It is now time to introduce the players for our first men's semi-final of the day. Up first, brother of Tori Malik, the unseeded Englishman has been here since round one, beating the numbers two and six seeds so far on his road to the semi-final. Please welcome onto court, Curtis Malik. Up against Curtis, representing Wales and the number five seed in this year's Springfield Scottish Squash Open. Please welcome onto court, Amir Evans. Welcome back to viewers tuning in on BBC Sports Scotland and BBC iPlayer. You're watching coverage of the Scottish Squash Open live from Inverness. And we have the first men's semi-final here between Emma Evans, the number five seed of Wales, Curtis Malik, unseeded from England. Just saw his uh, sister unfortunately lose in the first women's semi-final. So many good young players playing in this tournament and lots of upsets and five set matches. Curtis Malik from England is uh, 123 in the world currently, 21 years of age, born in Redhill, coached by his father Cameron. He got through his route to this semi-final. His brother Perry in the first round, he had to play first round. Some of the seeded players got byes and then Peter Creed of Wales, but he had to unfortunately retire in the second game. Then he came through in a massive match against Rui Suarez, 11-9 in the fifth. That's Curtis Malik in the white top on the right-hand side on the forehand for right-handers. And on the left-hand side, on the backhand, in the red shirt, Amir Evans. Currently 96 in the world, 24 years of age from Rill in Wales. Been on the tour for six years now and has got to an impressive five PSA finals but not been able to convert yet. Something he'll be trying to correct this week. He's got a 55% win, right, win rate out of 146 matches. He's coached by his father, Andrew, who himself was a Welsh international and also David Evans, who uh, is the Welsh national coach, former British Open champion, Curtis Malik. 22 years of age, not 21 as I said. Five years he's been on the tour. Into one PSA final. Fantastic run for him. As I said, especially that uh, win against the number two seed, Rui Suarez, yesterday. 11-9 in the fifth. It's going to be interesting to see how he can back up in this semi-final. And England v Wales semi-final. Well, I'm Simon Park, and joining me for this first men's semi-final is Scottish national coach Paul Bell. Good afternoon, Paul. How you doing, Simon? Very well, thank you. Thanks for inviting me up here. You were the first uh, first person that uh, that got in touch with me to get involved with this fantastic event. Well, your repetition procedure, you've uh, <laughs> doing a few of these events now. So we wanted to get the, the proper pros in. You're the first wow. name that came to mind. Thank you very much. It's been a great week. It's been great to be back in Inverness. It's the third time for me. Everyone, everyone's been so welcoming and so helpful. Not just to me, but to, to all of the players. They're all really enjoying the event. Yeah, it's been a great event, actually. The club have really got behind everything that we've uh, been trying to do. So it's a real joint effort with between Scottish Squash and the Inverness Club up here. And yeah, they've definitely loved having the event and put as much as they've got behind it, which has been great to see. So many bright green t-shirts knocking around all the army of volunteers. Um, and they've really gone the extra mile with just the little things that they've put on for the players. Yeah, it's fantastic. And of course, we've got Scottish interest. Uh, we've had quite a bit of Scottish interest during the event. But we have Georgia Adderley, the only Scott left at seven o'clock tonight. So you'll be in in your coaching capacity. Yeah. 
yeah, looking forward to it. It's going to be, uh, be a good one. It's been great to have so many Scots able to compete in the in the event. So uh, yeah, it's nice to have a semi-finalist as well. So here we go, the first men's semi-final today here in Inverness between number five seed Emir Evans of Wales and unseeded Curtis Malik, who you see in the white shirt of England. He's just been in the uh, coaching corner for his, for his sister, Tori, 17-year-old who got through earlier. Well, she got through to the semi-finals and unfortunately for her lost yesterday. Lost today, sorry. It's been such a good event for them, hasn't it? Obviously, Perry getting into it as a last-minute reserve, and uh, yeah, Tori and uh, Curtis have managed to get right through to the semi, which uh, they would have probably looked at a draw and thought, if they played really well, they would have a chance to, but you've got to back it up, haven't you? So it's... Yeah, it must be quite... A, um, wouldn't happen too often, having three siblings in... Uh, in an event together and two of them of course get into the semis it's been quite a rare occurrence i can't even think of uh, a family of three that are all all on the psa tour i i can't uh, currently but back in the day there was the martins rod martin mm -hmm. brett martin michelle martin yeah they did all right didn't they were they? pretty good <laughs> <laughs> no no pressure to the malics yeah i mean even the uh, evans are a pretty accomplished family of squash Absolutely, players as yeah. well of course and his sister, sister Tesney. Anyone who watches a lot of squash will be very familiar with her. Going to be interesting to see how this how this match goes. Uh, both of them are pretty good with the racket. Got a few different shots, and um, obviously it's a tough match for Curtis yesterday. So I'm sure Emmy will be trying to come out and make it as tough as possible in this first game and see what Curtis is uh, is made of. But it's good start. Fantastic start for the youngster. He's uh, really taking the game to his opponent. I say youngster, they're both youngsters, but just one's uh, Amir Evans, just a little older at 24. What do you feel? I'm going to put you on the spot. What's your, I mean, obviously you're, you're, you know, a neutral as it were in, in terms of this match, mm -hmm. being the Scottish national coach. Yeah. What's uh, what you what's your gut feeling for the winner here? Um, I think that. I think I'm going to back Emi. Yeah. I think he's probably going to be a bit too experienced. He's played a lot of like tough matches, and uh, I know he hasn't made it through to a 10k final yet, but. He's, he's definitely good enough to do it. And uh, uh, Curtis is obviously playing well. He's come out firing but on, in, so far in this match. But yeah, I think Emmy will know what to do. He'll change things up at the right time and have enough experience to get through. Play the big points well. Yeah. Score? Uh, I'm going to say 3-1. Okay. Just writing that down now. You're going to hold me to it. What's your track record? Are you pretty good at the predictions? I'm terrible. I'm terrible. I mean, I can't even remember what I predicted. That's how bad I am. <laughs> um, I don't put 
don't worry, I don't put too much emphasis on the scoreline, but if you get the correct winner, then I'm usually pretty, pretty impressed. Mm -hmm. It's a really, uh, it's a really hot cart. This cart at Inverness, and uh, it's lovely to play on a nice plastic cart. Um, but you need to really find your line and length before you start opening up the front of the cart. And um, yeah, as you can see here, just haven't quite managed to get the length working just yet. It's flying about a bit, but um, yeah, it's a bit scrappy, isn't it, at the moment? Mm -hmm. But that could be the nerves for the, these two. Yeah, it's a big opportunity, oh, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> a cursory apology there from, from Evans. Sometimes when the ball goes really tight to the wall, you kind of scrape it off and it drops out of reach from your opponent. Just a little bit fortunate. You love them though, don't you, as a player? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You apologise, but really <laughs> uh, fist pumping inside. It's not genuine. Curtis has already had a win over the Welsh, hasn't he? He beat uh, Peter Creed in round two. He, he did. Um, Peter Creed thought she had to retire, though, in the second with a, with a foot injury. With them both trying to volley in this early stage is, is uh, potential for a little bit of traffic. Hopefully they find a line around each other. Yeah, I was just about to say how, how clean it is so far. Both look to um, look to play the ball. That, you're always going to get a bit of traffic in, in squash, as you know. Just for the people that haven't seen squash before that might be tuning in, if you can get a let ball if your opponent you feel your opponent's in the way of your line to the ball and that's a fairly basic sim simple explanation mm -hmm. it can be it can be a bit complicated at times but and if your opponent hits the ball back to himself or herself and you're ready to play then it can be a stroke which is deemed your point yeah sometimes in these tense affairs it ends up coming down to a lot of decisions and uh you're trying to win rallies through uh, a lot, of, a lot of strokes if you can. Yeah, that's what we're trying to avoid in squash as much as possible. Just nice, nice continuous play. Don't want too much arguing with the referee. It's always great when the referee's not really remembered. That's mm -hmm. that's a good referee and somebody, and also the two players are, are helping the situation. It's funny though, we've had a lot of uh, school kids come in the early rounds and they they really start to perk up when there's a lot of uh, tension with the referees and a bit <laughs> of arguing, but uh, so the, in general, we want a nice clean match with as few decisions as possible. Yeah, a few of my co-commentators like it when it gets a bit, uh, bit feisty. I won't mention any names. So far, this is pretty clean between these two. Both of them moving well. Yeah, there's some uh, some good play. They're using all the court, a bit of variety in the length. They're just trying to find those targets. So that's an example of what I was describing earlier. A loose shot, so a ball that wasn't close to the side wall and it was coming near the body of, of Malik. Evans ready to play. So, stroke to the Welshman. Clawed it back well here, Emir. Four love to four all. Another, yeah, that is a stroke. It's a good example of a stroke. Ball again, coming quite loose, back into the body. Yeah, it's just a little bit loose down that backhand side, isn't it? Oh, that wasn't loose though. That was tight as you can get. Love to see the winners that are just squeezed off the sidewall. Good accurate squash. Curtis going for it right off the return of serve. Cross cut Nick put himself under a bit of pressure. 
they're amazing when they go in, but uh, if you do end up just missing it, you're really exposing yourself, leaving your opponent in the middle of the car. Both players now just rallying a little bit down the backhand side, which, which happens sometimes, especially with right-handers on that left side, just trying to keep the ball tight, which means close to the side wall, so that their opponent doesn't really have an opportunity to, to take it short. Right there, that was a, a short attack, the boast. It's good pressure, isn't it, from Evans? Yeah, really good. I love it. It's a great sign when someone's getting into a good position to be able to straighten those boasts. Um, a lot of players who rush onto the ball leave themselves only with the ability to play across court, and uh, this straight drive can be so effective from those front court positions, as you saw there. Bit scrappy that from from Malik, and he's he knows it. Don't want to be given away easy easy points at this stage against someone like Emir. Gonna make you work for every point. Defensive shot, getting out of trouble from the front of the court from Curtis. You use a bit of height when you're starting to feel the pressure in squash. It can really help you to get back into position on the tee, which is the middle of the court where you want to be trying to stand as much as you can. Did a good job there. Yeah, the pace of the game in general uh, always increases doesn't it like in a lot of sports every sort of five ten years and with different generations and it's fantastic to watch these days and it's been great at this level as well not just at the highest level in the world rankings but as you say you know the, the use of a lob it never dies and a little bit more of a touch game or a varied game is very effective Yeah, that's definitely one of the things that I really try and encourage the players that I work with up in Scotland to so have the ability to use as much variety as possible. Um, in a lot of pl people get caught up with the fact that the game is played at a really fast pace, and it absolutely is, but um, you don't want to be trying to avoid one being one-dimensional if you can. Yeah, definitely. And you have to think about how Mohamed El Shabagi has, has changed his game over the last few years, or adjusted his game, I should say. Absolutely. So there's so many different ways to play squash, and you can still be effective and a top, top player, playing in a whole host of different styles. So um, it's really about trying to find a style that works for you and the way that you see the game and physically how you are able to um, train and maximize your physical attributes. So this one's interesting because Amir Evans is, was asking for a stroke and I, that was this one is a bit more of a borderline stroke. Just yeah, explain did, why that he is. He did for, clear. Um, yeah. It wasn't the best shot. It was a bit loose, but he, he got out back to the middle of the court pretty quickly, didn't he? So I think he there was did. definitely an opportunity for Amir to hit that ball. But um, you get punished for those loose shots, don't you? Yeah, certainly do. Lovely. Nice and tight here, the clatter of the racket against the wall. He did well to stay in this.
where that lob needs to cut. Oh, it's not happy with that one. Or is that there? It's difficult that looked to tell. fine, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult to tell comprehensively. Emi was pretty convinced. I mean, as you know, sometimes squash is so fast, you, you you almost go in with your eyes closed and not even sure if you've you've you picked the ball up. Yeah, especially in these tense moments at the end of a big game, like you see things that perhaps aren't there just because you will in that ball to advance twice. Absolutely. Oh. Oh, well, here we go. It clipped, it clipped the side wall, but I'll just have a listen to, to Malik. I think that's a stroke. I think it's a stroke as well. Mm. The but Curtis uh, definitely did. Our opinions don't matter. <laughs> it's just the referee. So it means that Emir Evans has two game balls in this first game. Comes back to what we said before about that one that you thought was maybe a bit softer the other way around. And if you've hit a loose shot, then... You'd probably be getting punished for it, really. And that was definitely a loose drop shot. Hopefully Curtis won't let it affect him too much. Back in a decent rally here. Oh, that was nice. Getting up onto the volley, taking the game to Emir. Oh, I oh, just pulled away from that one slightly. Didn't quite commit to the, the follow through. But as you know, it's one of those situations where there's, there's so much riding on that, that drop shot. 99 out of 100 times in, in solo or any other kind of normal situation in the match, he would have put that one away. But it was the game ball situation that That's it, yeah. put pressure on yeah. himself. So Saw one save. Or one given away, I should say, from Evans. Ooh. The quality is definitely getting better in this match now. They're hitting their length targets a lot better. Yeah, and better width as well. Pace has gone up just a bit at the end of this game, at the business end. Especially from Evans, just trying to really pick it up on some of these drives and kills. Oh. <laughs> Amateur fist bump, trying to influence the referee. Yeah, that was that was a let all day long. As you can see, not not short enough, not not low enough, not far enough away from the body of, of Malik. He'd set up it nicely, though. that's exactly what he wanted, to create that volley opportunity on the forehand side. Just didn't quite execute it the way he would have liked. Well, you hit the nail on the head there. It's about creating those opportunities, isn't it? And uh, if you create, the more you create, the more chance you're going to get some. And there's the, the winning sort of bit of a half lob cross court there from, from Evans. But he doesn't care how he, how he wins the points or the games. Yeah, it was a nice, nice little lob to finish. So, Emir Evans from Wales, the number five seed, takes the first game 11-9 in 18 minutes. He leads by one game to love.
So very important first game for Emir Evans, the more experienced of the two. Yeah, I think it's going to be important for Curtis to try and uh, get into the match in this game here. Like he, he obviously played quite well in that first game. It wasn't as if he got blown away, but just not quite getting over the line. And that's kind of where my prediction came. Like Curtis is a great player with some great shots, but just that ability to get over the line, you need a few years on two, well, or a lot of players, a few years on two, it can really help you to be able to do that. Definitely, it's just just the just being in those situations, being in semi-finals, finals of of challenger events, and then you know that stepping stone into the into the next level, and moving moving into the top hundred, which which Evans is of course at 96. That has played that rally quite well there. I think. Um... Emir Evans did a good job of getting a let and getting out of that rally alive. Stepping up the court a little bit, both of them here, trying to volley more. Avoid the ball going all the way to the back of the court. You can do that to an opponent, it really forces them to have to rush their decision making and rush their shots and that's like that. exactly what right on cue. you're hoping for. He didn't really he had to try and half volley that from a from a standing position. Malik didn't work out for him. He's definitely got the ability to do it though. I think it's really good signs for the future for Curtis. He he can step up and he can play at this faster pace. He likes to volley. Yeah, I've been very impressed with him this week and, and his sister, of course, Tori. Um, both of them, I've heard a lot about um, the Malik family and I haven't really seen them, seen them play. There's been a few players this week that I've heard a lot about and haven't seen them play that much, just for whatever reason, not been at the same tournaments or they've not been uh, on TV. Yeah, it's just this, these 10K events are filled with the players that aren't quite making Super Series, isn't it? Kind of, if you're up in the top 80, you might get the opportunity every now and again to get first round of a Super Series event, but uh, these, this group of players would still be waiting for that opportunity. Yeah, that's right. Sebastian Bonmelet, number 58 in the world. He's the number one seed here from France. He's playing Nick Wall tonight at eight o'clock. And he's had a couple of opportunities, Bonmelet, to, to play against some top players like Gawad. He's looked in very good form this week. Yeah, he's looked good. It's um, going to be a good match, actually. See how Nick backs up after two five setters over the last couple of days. But his a great player, Nick Wall, as well, on the rise for sure. How do you think you'd back up after two five setters? I don't think I'd get through <laughs> one five setter. <laughs> yeah, same here. It's a couple of gym sessions this week, but 20 minutes is about my max. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> well, you can work hard in 20 minutes, it's better than nothing. Good walk from the hotel for me, that was enough. That was about 20 minutes as well, so we're, we're equal. Oh well, we've done about the same. Good play from Malik here. He's, he's making Evans do quite a lot of work in that rally. Yeah. Stretching him out well. Great pressure, yeah. Taking it into the front of the cart nicely and then getting onto the follow up volley quickly to push him to the front and then the back of the cart over and over again. It's definitely going to be a tactic that you will be trying to use. Get Emir on the stretch. He's so good with the ball next to him, isn't he? He hits a lovely ball, Emir. You definitely want to get him on the run as much as possible. Same as his sister. Yeah, very true. Both these players, in fact, timed the ball nicely. 
Yeah, squash families have obviously hit a lot, a lot of squash balls over the years <laughs> yeah. with each other. Yeah, there's obviously something in that. Quite a brutal rally, isn't it? Quite a long rally. Oh. Yeah, they've just taken a little step back. Um, got turned into more of a bit of a length battle, but um, you can't really step up and volley the way that they were in the first few points for the whole match. Or certainly, players of uh, at this sort of challenger level won't be able to do that. It's a, it's a real physical challenge. The guys at the very top make it look a lot easier than it is, don't they? Yeah, not all of those um, guys and and female players can do that at that even at that level. You know, it's it's very it's just very very tough for anyone, whoever you are. That's why it's so impressive when you look at somebody like Shibagi, who's been around for for so long and been able to motivate himself to play at that pace, play shots like that, yeah, um, for fun every every single day. And just keep it going in, in every single match. Just keep maintain the pressure. Yeah, that was a lovely finish. Getting the ball to bounce twice before the side wall. It's something that I really look for to, as a sign of a great shot. It makes it so much more difficult for the opponent. He's again, two really nice volleys from Emiya just to get that couple of points cushion. Yeah, he needed to go and play that Malik. Again, for people that haven't watched squash before, if you have to make every effort to to go and get the ball. That's um, obviously it's the referee's discretion, but if the referee feels you haven't made quite enough effort, then you won't you won't get a let ball. There's a nice little spell for Emmya Evans playing some lovely squash. Kurt is going for the quick one. It's pretty impressive. Time that the way he did. Can you see a little tactical change from Emiya in this game? Seems to be using the front of the car a little bit more to then really get onto the next one and send him front and back here. Yeah, that's a good shot. He's not going to get a let ball there. And you can tell quite often with, with the players, they know what they're going to get. Yeah, bit hopeful. trying his luck. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really good counter from Curtis. Full stretch. He's a tall, tall boy as well, isn't he? So he's using every inch that he's got. Back in it in this game. He's done well to claw it back. Probably this is a big point. Yeah, he's certainly not going away, Malik, at all. It's uh, hard stuff here. That's a very good area for Evans. That backhand around the middle of the court on the volley just flattens it so well. Millimeters above the tin. Yeah, it's a lovely shot. Comes out when he needs it. The right thing to try and do, play a lift. The pressure was on there. It just clipped the out of court line. Yeah, just overcooking it slightly there, Malik. As you say, the tactics are pretty good so far. Yeah, he's doing a really good job of stretching the court out, getting there. But just not exec executing it quite well enough. That's the problem. That's why we have Emir Evans with four game balls here in the second.
solid performance so far from Amir Evans. Yeah, it's been it's been very clinical, hasn't it, so far? He's not done a lot wrong. He's, his tactics have been pretty good. Not let his younger opponent get too much time and space and ability ar around the middle of the court to, to put the ball away. Oh. Oh, <laughs> not sure he knew what he was doing there, uh, Emir Evans. But again, he's won the point and he's won the game. Malik's just not able to respond to that shot. So Emir Evans of Wales takes the second game, 11-6 in 11 minutes. He leads by two games to love. Big climb for Curtis Mullick. Big mountain to climb for Curtis Mullick now. Do you see anything changing, Parky? Well, not with shots like that, no. I mean, it wasn't a bad idea, to be honest. But um, again, uh, you know, early doors in this third. It's just the execution that's not quite there for Malik. He's not far away. Mm -hmm. Some of his choices are, are, are certainly not the wrong choices. But the difference is that Evans is taking his opportunities yeah, it's been very clinical around the middle, especially on the volley. So Curtis will be looking to try and take away the middle of the court for Emir. And he's already using a little bit of height, trying to make sure that he gets the ball through the court, which is a good idea on his part. Well, it looked good from here, that ball. I don't looked know how your eyes are. shot, yeah. yeah. And just from the flight of the ball, and we can't always tell Let's have a closer look here. I think that was good. Yeah, it looked a great looked shot. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it could have been exactly any lower. Exactly you want to be putting the ball. <laughs> yes. And literally a millimetre above the tin. Oh, they're playing a lot. Tough. Not what you need when you're 2-0 down, is it? No, I mean, it didn't deviate at all, did it? I, th I think that was good, but to go by the referee's opinion. It's so hard to tell when you uh, don't have the replay. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good finish from Evans. How much of an impact do you think that brutal five-setter is having on Curtis today? I don't know. I don't think that's... Um, I mean, he, he'd be able to tell us um, a bit later on how his body's feeling, but, I mean, he's... He's not 17 anymore. He's still young, obviously, but I, th I think he'll be okay. I think it's just the 
the good play of Evans and the experience of Evans and, and situations like this where he's not quite able to execute that's, that's causing the problem. I don't think it's the, the, uh, the previous match. Yeah, I think one thing that Emir uh, is doing really, really well when you're playing against a player who's as skillful as someone like Curtis Malik, they're going to have really good spells during the game and he's hanging in there with him during those spells so it's kind of 50 50 three all four all when curtis is going through really good spells when he's playing well yeah yeah but players like that are generally always going to have a little dip as well and make a couple of errors and that's where he's getting his leads and then keeping hold of them so yeah so absolutely right good show from amir evan so far Really starting to use the front of the court now. Whipping that boast in from the back of the court. He hasn't played that hardly at all in this match. Bit of a surprise there for, for Malik. Perfect one, bouncing twice before, just at the side wall. Played it quickly. But absolute brutal to get down for those balls before they hit. Bounce twice. And again, he's can he might to uh, Employ that one a bit more, the boast. Another one of those soft ones, isn't it, where the referee wants him to go through and play that shot. Yeah, I'm not sure you had a full line to the ball there, though, Malik. He, but it's his responsibility, I guess, to, to, to show that a bit more. Mm. And almost, I don't know, muscle is the right word, but just, just show that he can, you know, he can almost get there even with interference. Oh, that was nice reactions. Quick volley there from down the middle. quite get down to that one did he it was sort of still a little bit upright on that uh, reaction volley Malik I think that actually did show to me that there is a little bit of fatigue coming in yeah these errors that are creeping in in this game it's been tough so far even in this match let alone what happened yesterday so um, that held with the fact that you're 2-0 down you know you've got to put a hell of a lot of work in to try and get back into this match great shot from Evans there from the back of the court fantastic skill here just ran it in I mean it couldn't have been any better Let's have another look from here beautiful yeah that's lovely confidence is really building now isn't it yeah he's got his tail up the Welshman oh And we are telling the referee what the decision needs to be. <laughs> well, the reason why this is given as a no let is because uh, the referee feels that he's got room to swing there. Malik, he's saying he wants a safety let. He was scared to swing. But the referee feels that he had enough space and should have played it. It's a no let. He definitely should have played it. I don't yeah. know about the space bit, but the court was wide open for him, wasn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he hasn't got the cross court available there. That's why it's a stroke to Evans. He can't play a cross court there. He would he would strike uh, Malik. It wouldn't be safe. Curtis just overcomplicated that. He had a bit of time and opportunity at the front of the court there. And if it came off, it would have been wonderful. But just didn't quite get it right. And Emi got the stroke. Oh, great drop shot lunge there. Well that played, nice. Malik. Fantastic straight. And I mean, initially the volley and the, and then the, the straight on the forehand side. That's really good. Long way to go though for Malik. Been some fantastic stuff in this third game from Evans. Yeah, it's been a real professional performance from Emir Evans. 
He'll be pleased with this in the semi-final of a Challenger 10k event. Well, I would say a stroke. Yeah, there's not a lot of clearance there after he's hit that shot. Well, zero he clearance. Was at, <laughs> he was at full stretch. It's tough to get out of those positions yeah. quickly. And that's what you want when you put somebody in the, in the front of the court. That's that's what you want, isn't it? If yeah, they're, they're going to get it back. Definitely, that's the reward that you're looking for. The risk is there that you've got to play such a fine shot into the front of the court. Risk of maybe hitting the tin or leaving it open for your opponent to do something to hurt you, but the reward is really high as well. It's well reacted, but some great pressure again. Some fantastic cross courts, just the right line and, and pace and, and height on the front wall from, from Evans, measuring it beautifully. Rewarded him with six match balls here in the third game. Six opportunities to get to the final of this Scottish Open here in Inverness. Well, you can see what it means to Emir Evans. In this match, this semi-final, a wonderful run from, from Curtis Malik of England. And there you can see, fully deserved for Emir Evans, the number five seed from Wales, taking out Curtis Malik, the unseeded player from, from England. 11-9, 11-6, 11-4 in 42 minutes. He's through to the final tomorrow.